With this story, what we've been suggesting is that between Stark and everything that the Strategic Scientific Reserve is doing, at Hydra, there was this secret arms race, and that both were working on advantages to help them win the war. We wanted weapons that felt like they were made out of the materials available at the time, but because Skull had access to the cube, he was able to infuse them with, with energies that were not available at the time. We didn't want to feel like a spaceship had crashed in the middle of World War II. We wanted to feel like that just might have been able to exist. And with the resources that Hydra had and sort of these secret advanced weapon designs powered by the cube, you believe that they, that they could exist. So that served as our inspiration. Obviously looking at through the comics, coming looking at all the old designs and, and, and modernizing them, you come out with pretty astounding designs. All the Hydra stuff, the cars and the motorcycles and the guns and all their weaponry is, it's amazing. Well, what's wonderful is it's set in that era, but it still feels very futuristic. So you're seeing these creations, these submarines that would never have been thought of. You're looking at different types of metal and guns in battle. All those designs are based on practical designs of that era and then have been sort of enhanced slightly. There were a lot of Nazi designs of, of machinery and of weaponry, which you know, was never actually built, but we've built it. Or we've built it either in a practical sense, like you see behind me here, or we're going to be building stuff, even bigger stuff, in the computer and having these vast pieces of machinery. It's kind of exciting to be able to try and be doing something which looks real but was never really quite realized. In the comics, Hydra and the Hydra hordes have a very distinctive look sort of a green and yellow, a strap that makes an H. They lift their hands up, they've got these goggles on and we were doing Hydra. We didn't want to run from that. And coming up with a design that not only looked cool, but looked believable and that they could fight it. And they were very specific in size. They had to be over six foot tall, they had to be a certain weight, they had to look impressive. When you see 50 of these Hydra soldiers dressed in costume, you run for the hills. The Hydra guards, and they have these Hydra-powered guns, and it's, this, it's all based on this cube energy. So we had this blue cube technology trying to get that to work in our world. We created five blue cube weapons and these are all totally bespoke and each one of them has blue pulsing light out Then we had to get movement into them. You will be punished for your insolence. You will be brought before the Führer himself. The versions that are on the tanks, we had to create them so they're something like eight feet long. So they're quite substantial, quite large cannons. Daniel Simon was our vehicle designer. He had some great ideas and his beautifully elegant machinery. So everything that Hydra has designed has a Hydra touch and it's very, very sleek. So each vehicle had to reflect a certain evilness and aggressiveness, yet be kind of elegant and seductive at the same time. This car has six wheels. There's a reason for it. It's just pure traction. When Schmidt wants to go off-road, he has to be able to go off-road. He has to look elegant on a parade, yet go to the fields. And there were cars like that. A Mercedes developed the G4, which had six wheels. So we always look for something truthful. Designing a car for a film that actually looks like that could be built, yet it's so out there, like the size. I mean, this is 20 five feet long car. This is like 10 feet longer than a normal car. And you have to know that half a foot in the automotive world is crazy. It's like so much and we're like almost double as long as that. So you can easily look ridiculous with your design. You can definitely not take a classic car and blow it up to the size. It would look completely wrong. The width of the cockpit, the steering wheel, certain things that interact with a driver that are visual key elements, they don't grow up with it. And balancing this, that was, was the biggest fun. Get in! The sub went through a lot of design stages. A big thing, especially on the sub, was always uh, let's stay simple. Let's stay simple and clean. We could have gone totally overboard, but that would have made it almost childish in a wonderful way, but we wanted to be very serious. So the sub, we went from, it was always a simple cigar, very simple, but the drive system went all over the place. We had two propellers in the back with exposed rudders. We had crazy propeller systems that fold up and down, but we ended up with jet propulsion, again to be a little hydra, and it added to the sleekness of the vehicle because we don't have any exposed propellers. This is World War II of the Marvel Universe. 
where super soldier programs are going on, where Hydra is tapping into these incredible sources of power, creating these vehicles and these weapons far beyond anything that we've seen before, but done in a way that, uh, that feel period appropriate and I hope uh, sort of frightening. It's an astounding, talented group of people coming together under the vision of Joe Johnston to create these really, really iconic motorcycles, tanks, weaponry that Hydra are using. People will have never quite seen the villains we have here, the planes, heightened levels of technology, all coming together to form something very new and very special.